we take a look at 7 evolutionary technologies which could completely change our world. Current modern day computers are becoming deadlocked by Moore's law and they will eventually be replaced by a new type of computing technology. Quantum computers utilize quantum bits, otherwise known as qubits. These qubits behave quantumly, so they have the ability to use 1 and 0 at the same time, allowing for exponentially faster calculations. However, current quantum computing is still in its infancy phase since qubits are notoriously tricky to manipulate and maintain, so they're not able to play Crisis or even run Windows for that matter. Only time will tell if quantum computers become a part of our everyday lives. And number 6, Nano Machines. We have utilized basic forms of nanotechnology, with self-cleaning materials and sunblock which reflects ultraviolet light. But this technology is still in its infancy phase and we have only begun to discover its potential. Imagine a set of nano machines which could destroy cancer cells, or have the ability to transform a truck to a sports car. There really is no limit to what nanotechnology can do. But the main problem with nano machines is that it does bring up a new realm of problems associated with energy and even production. And we also have to consider that nano machines can be one of the most powerful weapons ever made, which could make it to be one of the most revolutionary and deadliest technologies at the same time. But engineering things at a nano scale can also lead to new developments in metamaterials. And they are not really machines, but they're more so materials which don't occur naturally. A few examples would include a cloaking device, or even a super lens which gets around the problems associated with wave decay. But the applications of metamaterials are basically endless. Ultimately, if we can figure out how to build and mass produce things at a now scale, it will completely change our world. At number 5, Ultra Capacitors. We always hear about a new battery invention every year, and it's almost comical at this point. But inventing something which supersedes existing battery technology and actually making it practical, well, that's another story. We also have to keep in mind that batteries have limited lifespans and they have lengthy charging times. That's where capacitors can overtake this type of technology, since they can charge within seconds, endure more cycles and even undergo greater temperature variations. But the only problem is, is that capacitors do not quite carry the same energy density as a battery. So a car running on the equivalent weight of capacitors would not quite get the mileage as you would on batteries. That is quickly changing though and research is being done with graphene and metal carbides to make a better capacitor which has greater energy density. Combined with getting the cost of capacitors down, then we could ultimately see the capacitor replace the battery. The question is, is how long is that really going to take? At number 4, Limited AI. I'm going to re-emphasize the word limited because this type of AI system is already in place and it's rapidly changing things. From driving vehicles to performing surveillance, it has no doubt proved that it can outperform humans in certain tasks. And it has limitless potential. So what about a fully conscious AI? And why am I not mentioning that? Well, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. The riddle to consciousness is figuring out how it even works. Is it based on survivability, or is it something deeper than that, like a soul? There is no universal agreement on what life even is, so humanity can progress another hundred, even thousand years into the future, and there still may not be an answer to this problem. But at some point, maybe not in our lives, but sometime in the future, it may become very difficult to tell the difference between a human and a limited AI system portraying a human. At number 3, VR Immersion. It's not really that far off to think that we may just end up living in a fantasy world, if we are not already. Total VR immersion would obviously be able to stimulate all five senses, and therefore we wouldn't be able to tell the difference between real life and the VR world. With nearly half the population in poverty, this would be a very powerful incentive to visit VR, but that is only if the technology becomes cost viable to everyone. Obviously, this is a topic for a whole nother video, and let's just hope that people are not eventually jacked into a Matrix-style system. But if we take it one step further, augmented reality, which superimposes images and information on the real world, may be the key to power. And it might give one person an information advantage over anyone who does not have access to the technology. Obviously, this would create more of a disparity in society, and it just shows once again that technology can be both a benefit and a detriment to our everyday lives. At number 2, Room Temperature Superconductors. Superconductors were discovered over 100 years ago, and they have a property of exhibiting zero electrical resistance. 
They also expel magnetic fields, and as some of you know, I'd like doing experiments on this weird effect. Ultimately, whoever figures out how to make a room temperature superconductor will hold one of the most important keys to the future of technology. From hover trains to ultra-efficient motors, and even power lines with zero energy loss, there would be a complete revolution. Now we have experimented with a few things and nothing has been clarified just yet, one of them being metallic hydrogen, but it is also very unlikely to be metastable. It might just be superconductive when it's under extreme pressure. Graphene also could be superconductive, but this is a two dimensional layer and it still needs to be cooled down. But having said that, there have been advances in graphene design and production. So it could be the answer to this problem. We'll just have to wait and see. That's number one, fusion power. Well, let's be honest here. We always hear about how fusion power is just around the corner. But this time around, I think there are some real breakthroughs. From MIT to the ITER and even the tokamak reactor, there are multiple projects around the world which are using different approaches to a stable reaction. There is even the Lockheed Compact Fusion Reactor project, which is intended to be a mobile 100 megawatt unit. Not much more information has been cleared lately. MIT has also made the extreme claim that they will produce stable fusion power as soon as 2025. But maybe fusion power is not the answer to our energy needs. It might come from an outsider which is pretty much ignored by mainstream science. One example of this is the Brilliant Light Power Sun Cell Reactor. To sum this up, it's basically a reaction which forces hydrogen atoms to go to a lower than ground state and exhibit enormous amounts of energy. Now yes, I know, this is technically impossible, but it's kind of neat to see working prototypes actually produce a reaction. Ultimately, whether it comes from fusion or some other source, it is much needed and it will help advance our civilization into the future. So once again, thanks for watching, please like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.